What's going on guys? Snag here and it's time to wrap up round 6 of the 2024 NRL season and that was an awesome round of footy man. We're getting about one dud game around at the moment, that's it. It used to be four, now we're getting one. It's been absolutely brilliant guys. Before we get into it though guys, got to announce the winner of the KO $50 gift voucher guys which I'm going to send out to one lucky winner who actually picked all eight lad picked all eight eight from eight with that round of footy well no we'll give it eight from eight there was a draw so I gave everyone a win for the draw all right so um and just on this video too guys I'm going to whip through it a little quicker than normal just because I've already recorded it and I forgot to change one of the settings so my mic wasn't working so i'm sitting there blabbing away for about 40 minutes and my mic wasn't on so testing testing one two one two are you on oh bro i love you guys but to record this twice in a day please please it's an effort all right the winner is krizar is that how you say it krizar bro nailed every single game he had roosters 13 plus it was 1 to 12 but absolutely brilliant shout out to you bro and he wrote put the house on it if you did you're moving into a bigger house brother because you would have got about 50 to 1 on that um absolutely insane i know sports bet we had the the draw sports bet was actually paying the draw out as a winner i'm not too sure if anyone else did but shout out to sports bet for doing that one that's absolutely brilliant and um yeah wow um what a what a what a round. I want to give everyone a shout out as well. There was a lot of seven from eights as well, including saying the draws a win. So you guys, I've said it before, I'll say it again. The, the subs on the, on this channel, man, like there's a lot of smart footy dudes in here. I see a lot of seven from eights all, all the time. It's um, absolutely brilliant. So, um, and I'm not going to lie too, I, I go through the comments sometimes and I find punts. I found a punt once where I won, I think it was, I think it was 17 to one, but I had 500 bucks on it. So oh, I've won some money just going through my comments. So if you ever don't like a punt I put down, you can always check my comments and you'll probably find something you do like because there's some juicy ones in here. So I've messaged you here, bro. So I'll just, um, when you send me your Instagram or TikTok or whatever, I'll message you, bro, and I'll send you out your gift voucher, man. So shout out to you, brother. Good work. All right, let's go through the games quickly. We'll have a look at the ladder and we'll get through these. Like I said, I will whip through this a little quicker than normal. Also, guys, make sure you are following me. I subbed on here as well. Um, I am going to do another giveaway on when I drop my next prediction video, which will be Monday morning. No, sorry, when, when do I do it? Wednesday morning. Um, and so a cool giveaway, a bit different, and also a um, bit of an announcement as well, which is going to be really cool for the channel, for you guys, for, for sort of the rugby league community in general, dare I say. So uh, stay tuned for that one. It should be a pretty cool, cool little project I'm sort of working on, and I'm really excited for it. All right, Roosters get it done against the Knights in a close one. Storm s pull another close victory out. Absolutely escape from Alcatraz. Uh, Battle of Brisbane Broncos beat the Dolphins 28-14. to We have a draw, our first draw of the year. Warriors 22, Seagulls 22, an absolute thriller. Eels with the upset 27-20. to Rabbitohs fought their tails off, but still go down to the Sharkies 34-22. Dragons get it done 24 to 12 against the West Tigers and the Raiders sneak home in golden point against the Titans. What a game that was. So let's have a look at the ladder. Sharky's up on top. Four wins, one loss, one by. Um, differential of 23. Shout out to Canberra Raiders too. Sitting in third with the best for and against in the comp. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? And Storm always lurking. Always lurking. So Cowboys, Dolphs move down a couple spots. Uh, Panthers move up with the bye. Se Warriors and Seagulls. I mean, this is where this one point's funny. You can, it can save you from coming into the eight. So if one of these teams lost, they'd be buried way down here. Um, you don't know whether a draw is good or bad till the end of the year. Sometimes that extra point can come in handy. Sometimes you like, you can make you just fall outside the eight, and you're like, man, if we won that instead of draw, we would have made the eight. So you don't know whether a draw is a good or a bad thing. So for right now, it's sort of good for both teams. They're, you know, they were, they're in the top eight because of it. You know what I mean? But uh, one team would have been higher, one team would have been lower. But yeah, like I said, you don't know whether a draw is good. Until the end, um, Roosters, Broncos and Eels all moving up into contention for the eight here. Um, and the rest are struggling. They're struggling. All right, Knights, Roosters. This was a cracker, man. This was a really good game. Uh, man, the match for me was Joey Manu. Um, Jesus Christ. 
Caelan Ponga was on one last night. Little scary thing for me about this was how obviously reliant they are on Caelan Ponga. If you didn't watch the game, Caelan Ponga was absolutely carving them to shreds. Um, and then he got injured against Tupo, I think it was, he, in the corner, did his hip flexor, and he still played. He was still on. He was still pretty good. We'll, go, we'll have a look at his stats in a minute. They were still really good. But even him just being, like what I'd say, mediocre Ponga, the Roosters swallowed them, man. The Roosters really swallowed them. They're going to just be praying. Like, it's always scary when your team relies on one player. We all know that's uh, been the case for the Knights before with a famous man named Joey Johns. The win win rate and loss rate with Joey in and out of the team was absolutely insane. Like, if you're in a tipping comp back then, if Joey's in the team, you tip him to win. If they weren't, then you tip him to lose. So... Ponga need, they need to work something out that they're not so reliant on Ponga, but pretty damn good. Um, master stroke from um, the Roosters coach, putting Joey Manu at fullback and actually putting Su Ali'i to the wing, Punga into the centres and Tupo. And here's why. <laughs> here's why. Look at these metres, bro. 347, 136 post contact, two line breaks, two line break assists, one try assist, 11 tackle breaks. Tupo, 237, 101. Post contact, three line breaks. Joe Suali'i, 228, 99 post contact. They had 336 metres post contact from their back three, which just allowed their forwards to rest and win the, win the battle on defence. Um, like I said, Teddy's coming back, but I like this back three better. And I, it's not like I think... I don't even... not necessarily saying Joey's a better fullback than Teddy, even though he probably is. It's just it just this this works better. It just this this just works better. Joey's just yeah, it's just like and it just freed up their forwards to do so much more. I mean, that just freed up their edges and then like Angus Crichton looked the best he ever looked because their their sets were rolling. Victor Radley, two forty two. Like this is these are insane numbers. Tyrrell May one eighty two. Like it just freed up their forwards to do more with their back three punching out these crazy meters. So. Yeah, um, Robbo has a big, big question ahead of him because I don't think the rooster is... This is the thing, Teddy is so good, but I, I just... It's because I think Teddy needs to play a little bit more like... I know Dylan Edwards and him are very similar anyway, but he never tries to quite overplay his hand, Dylan Edwards. Like, he'll just run the ball, like, great position to play, snatch the ball, run the ball up, find a seam, bang, hit it hard, play the ball quickly onto the next, and then somebody able to do that again. Boop, 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 kicking in. Yeah, it's just, I liked it better. Like, I find like Sue Elite and um, Teddy can just try too hard for a line break almost and ends up getting put on his back or dragged around or whatever like that. And sometimes he does make him and he's great. And again, I'm not a Teddy basher. I love Teddy, but it's just, it's one of these problems, man. It's one of these problems. But, um, but yeah, the back three were massive, um, absolutely massive. And, Look at the look at Caelan Ponga's numbers here: two hundred and ten run meters, sixty eight post contact, two line breaks, one line break assist, two try assists. Bradman Best was brilliant as well: two hundred seventy four meters, one hundred and seven post contact, one line break. Really, really good. Uh, one of the Saifidis was real good. I think it was Jacob. Jacob Saifidi was nice, real nice in this one. Um, Leo Thompson had one of his better games of the year as well. Uh, Greg Marju too. Look at that: two hundred eighteen meters. Um, I put Greg Marju in as a try scorer, but he, they put him on the other side. I was like, come on, man, you're killing me, bro. Put him on the left. Put him on the left, bro. What are you doing? I said that was a bit annoying, but have a quick look at the team stats here. This is insane. Both teams ran for over two kilometers 2.1, 2.2. Um, both teams close to 900 post contact meters. That is insane. Six line breaks to seven. Very even. Tackle breaks 31 to 39 to the Roosters. Uh, Knights won the ruck. I did think they were a little bit quicker at playing the balls. Um, Roosters, nine offloads to, to six. Um, tackle efficiency from the Roosters was really good. 90%. Only 30 missed tackles. 39 for the Knights. Um, errors 5-7. to seven. I loved every second of this game. It was so nice to watch, guys. Um, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Suit Elite, he is a winger. He has to play on the wing. Um, like I said, if your centres, like Jennings and 
uh, Punga are probably one of the like worst center pairings in the game. But if they can just not miss tackles, just play nice, you know what I mean? Just, just do do their job. Just do your job. Give us a 7 out of 10. I think you, it just goes a real long way. It really goes a long way. I thought Connor Watson and Luke Keary were pretty decent. Um, it was just... Fords didn't have to do much because the, the outside backs and the end, like, it was just it was nice it was just such a good game, I, I really enjoyed this guys it was really really good. Uh, Satili I think did his hammy, this dude was all right too but Jesus Christ here away man whatever the the May family eats for breakfast give me some give me some. Um, Heatherton and Croker were pretty solid as well but yeah absolutely brilliant game enjoyed every minute of it guys um, both teams. You know, a couple tweaks away from being genuine, genuine contenders, I think. But like I said, just a few tweaks away. But still, it's early in the season. But uh, plenty there from both teams. But yeah, I'm just a little worried about the Knights with Ponga. Being, the team being so reliant on Ponga. And we all know Ponga's chin's a little glassy. A little glassy. Um, Storm's Bulldogs. Cracking, cracking game again. Escape from Alcatraz for the... For the older doggies, uh, for the Knights now, the tries haven't been put in here for some reason. Um, good job, NRL.com. Um, now, look, let, let's talk about the doggies first. I thought they were really good, man. Everyone tipped the storm from this away, and they were very close to uh, seal on this thing. Um, I loved Connor Tracy at fullback. For me, doggies fans, he is your fullback. I love the high energy, um, high energy, the impact, the way he covers ground, his fast play, the balls, he finds the seam, plays it. He'll take two runs in a set. Doesn't get folded too often. Doesn't get pushed back. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and yeah, Crichton was solid too. Addo Carr was brilliant. Um, Matt Burton was brilliant. Now we're going to be talking about this a little bit throughout this video because it seemed to be a little bit of a theme. Um, Burt, they pretty much lost this game because Burton's kicking. Now, conversions, one from three. I mean, Nick Meany, two from three and three tries each. So the difference was a goal conversion. If we check Burton out, I'm pretty sure he's kicking in the 60%. And I think he's roughly high 60s for his career. That's just not going to cut it. When you're not a top, top, top... Like, if you're like, I don't know, Penrith or something, or and you're... You're scoring six tries every game and the other team scoring two. Yeah, you can get away with a 60% conversion rate, but that's not going to cut it in what's going to be mostly tight games this year. There's there's going to be a lot of games this year where um, it's going to be you know tight and conversions, it's, it's so important. So they've got to sort that out. I think Critter should be kicking. I actually like Critter as a goal kicker. Um, I think he's real good. Go well, you know, he's not, you know, he's not a sniper, but... I. Burton, I think Burton's kicked in the 60% twice. And I think one year he was in the 80s. But yeah, he's not great um, goal kicker. And like I said, there's a few games this weekend where goal kicking was the difference. Um, yeah, so I have to wait and screw. We'll have to wait and screw. All right, let's have a look at the stats. I mean, doggies need to complete better. They, they would really let them down in this game. Um, but look at this, man. They won the running meters. That's 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 pretty crazy, man. Like think about that for a second. They had four less sets and they ran for an extra two hundred meters than the than the, the storm did. That's great. They won the post contact. They won the line breaks. They average set distance. Average play the ball speed about the same. They won the offload battle. So doggies doggies are close. You know they're close. They're real close. Just lacking a little polish in offense. Um, Thirty nine tackles a little high, and then the errors. So. Pretty much for the doggies to win this game and other games against, you know, top eight teams. Do what they did. Get this to 30. Get this to nine. And you're good. You're good doggies fans. All right? That's it. Just listen to Uncle Snag. You'll be fine. Um, let's have a look at some of the... Vili Army kick air. Just touch on Vili Army. No, his stats don't read quite as well as how dominant he was in this game. I mean, 100 run metres, 23 post contact. He created just about everything for the doggies. Now, when the doggy sign kick out, I was like, rubbish signing for 850 or whatever they paid for him. I was like, unless you can unlock kick out, he's pointless. Like, the reason why he was so good at Penrith was... He, they unlocked, they used him well. They they unlocked him. They got him the space at the ball at the right time in the right amount of space. And 
you know, he went to work and then they, if he didn't get a line break, they'd get a quick play the ball and then there was space somewhere else. So last two or three weeks is the first time I've seen them use kick out, like, sort of like the way Penrith did. And it looked so good. They they they, they tore Melbourne's right edge apart. It, they, they tore it apart, man. Like, it was... It was Meters, line breaks, whenever they wanted them. And obviously, you know, Josh Adokar was the recipient of it. Three tries, 243 metres, 31 post contact, five line breaks. Five line breaks, six tackle breaks. You get what I'm saying? Bronson Sherry, 209, 53, two line breaks, three line break assists, two try assists. You know what I mean? So these guys reap the benefits. It doesn't quite show on Vili Army stats here. Oh, line break assists, it does. Oh, yeah, because he was the last pass on a couple of them. Um, but yeah, it, it was um, it was a really good performance from that left edge, um, and I like the way that team set up. Drew Hutchison, I saw a lot of people saying he should get dropped after this. He's actually he's not doggies fans are being pretty critical of him. He's not that bad. He's just not. There's a lot of half holes he goes to run through. Like there was one towards the end of the game, and there was a hole there. And look, there's probably five number sevens in the comp that punched that hole. Like it would have been Nico. Cleary, Moses, I don't even think Cherry Evans would have been quick enough, like, um, Sean Johnson probably would have, but it wasn't, it wasn't his, it's not like he's bad, he just wasn't, he just didn't have the, the 0-60 speed quite there, like I said, he's not the best number seven in the world, but yeah, it's, it's not all his fault, like I think everyone thinks it is, there was a lot of lacked polish like they, they had the better of the the territory there for a long time and um it wasn't all drew hutchison's fault or anything like that but i like the way it's all going out it was a bit weird like josh curran started as a prop and then turpin was it Tur- yeah jake turpin came in at lock i'm sitting there turpin dropped his first ball i'm sitting there going oh bro what the hell have you done Serraldo? you but i actually really liked it like even though they were small and they were sort of getting battered around the middle a little bit and they were just shifting to edges to get space when melbourne's forwards got tired they actually had some size on the bench which i actually highlighted in the preview video Famasili, hughes and katonga came on later in the game and actually found some real nice fast play the balls some post contact meters and it actually worked also it's the complete opposite of what teams normally do normally they go big to start bring on some leg speed on in the second half. But it was actually cool to see the, the opposite being done and it working. Um, I love it whenever a team does a new strategy. And I, and I thought it was pretty good. So uh, shout, out to the, shout out to the Storm, shout out to the Doggies for making uh, me Friday night pretty juicy. Good on you. Both, both good performances. Doggies are looking better. Who their Doggies got next week? Let's see if they can get a dub. Knights. Ooh, it's winnable. Knights have been good, but not, not ridiculous. Battle of Brisbane, Brizzy Bronx, Brizzy Bronx. Um, look, let's not get into this game a whole heap just because Dolphins had damn near half their salary cap on the bench after the whatever minute Hammer so went out. Um, man of the match for me, I didn't put one. Uh, I forgot my man of the match for this one. You know, my man of the match for the last game, kick out. Um, yeah, Hammer goes down. Look, this was actually a bit of an arm wrestle at the start. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. It was good to watch. Um, man, shout out to like Brisbane Rugby League in general. Full house, Battle of Brisbane. It was sick, man. Absolutely loved it. Um, Corey Oates' first half was just... I was watching this game with my son, and we were just like, Corey, what are you doing? <laughs> Corey. <laughs> Oh man, I was just sitting there going, bro, he was just having a game, like the daddest half game, like, and then he makes a break, which he didn't hear the whistle, and then Hammer chases him, and then does his hammy, it was just like, that was comical, that, that first half of rugby league, like, you probably, like, you could have played, like, clown music behind it, you know, that, that's, that's what should have been played behind this game, like, I should have muted it and just put on the clown music, because that's how, like, the first half was so, so bad. There was just dumb errors. It was it was crazy. Let's have a look. Yeah, sixty seven percent from both teams. Like, let's have a look at these errors. Seventeen to sixteen. I mean, there should be. I mean, you know, a good quality game of rugby league. There's seventeen errors in a game. Bronk. <laughs> they had double that. You know. So, um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty crazy. And as soon as Hammer went off, they just lost their way a little bit. But I mean, people were saying, "Oh, Broncos, we have this player out. We have that player out. Dolphins have more." Gilbert, Herbie, Flags, 
you know, who else? Hammer goes down. O'Sullivan's out. Like they they got a lot out too, man. They got a lot out too. Um, but yeah, when when Nicarima went back to fullback, and then Anthony Milford came in and said he's just not. He, Milford's not NRL standard anymore. Needs to get his butt to the Super League. Um, but yeah, it was, it was it was a pretty entertaining game for the most part. Like in sort of a weird comical way. Um, yeah, so Broncos won yardage. They won the post contact. They won the tackle breaks. Won the ruck. Um, five offloads to seven to the Dolphins. Ninety-one uh, percent um, tackle efficiency. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's only twenty missed tackles in the game. That's great, and not not too bad from the Dolphins either. Thirty-six missed tackles. But yeah, this, the errors were just crazy. And eight penalties. One. Check. It was just a clown music, bro. Um, now, as far as the Broncos go, I thought Reese's comeback game was good without being like crazy electric. Quite a few errors from the bro. Corey Oates was the error city. I loved what Corey uh, Stags did. I love what Selwyn Cobo did. It's crazy these two guys might be squeezed out of the Broncos over the next few years, over the next year. Um, Jesse Arthur's was pretty solid, but a quiet game. Loved what Mam did. Jock Madden's not quite him to me. But looks pretty solid still. Like he can come in and do a job, but he doesn't like. Let's just say Reynolds just. I don't. Know, let's touch on wood. Let's say he bl- blows his ACL out this week at training, and he's, he has to retire. I'd be really worried for the Broncos he, he, if he if he had to step in today. And he's apparently who is going to step in after Reynolds does retire. So he's got a good year or two to to get better. But you know he's he definitely lacked a little polish. For example. Katoa, on the other hand, I haven't seen a kid this good, this young, since Nathan Cleary in the halves. Uh, quick story, when, when I saw Nathan Cleary for the first time, he was five games into his NRL career, and I remember sitting there going, I've never seen a kid control a game of rugby league with his kicking game in his f- under 25, to be honest. And this kid's five, and I said, I said, I think this dude could break every record there is to break, and be the goat and he's well on his way to being that you know he's you know Nathan Cleary at the moment is way further ahead as accolades wise than even Joey or um, uh, Jonathan Thurston were in their mid-20s 25 26 years old um, this Katoa kid is something else I don't know if he's I know he's played for Tonga I don't know if he's a New South Wales junior I think he, I think he was a Penrith junior so um He's special, man. He's really, really good. And he, he, there was light years between these two games this week, this weekend. Um, Corey Jensen's been really good. Billy Walters was solid. Fletcher Baker is not him. He needs to go play Q Cup. They need Payne back and Xavier Wilson in there. Personally, uh, Fletcher Baker is just just good for an error or two every game. He's good for a penalty every game. And Broncos back. Three make a lot of errors, and as a man, like their backs make a lot of errors because they're trying so much stuff, which is cool because they create so much stuff. The reason why Broncos was so good last year is the middle forwards made no errors. Like Flegler made the most, and he was still pretty low on the list of penalties and errors as far as a middle forward goes. So, yeah, they can't have a forward coming in and making errors as well. So, um, yeah, he's got a. I, I just I've, I didn't understand the hype with this dude, but anyway, um. They have a guy named Payne Haas coming back soon. I don't know if you heard of him, but he's pretty good. And I'm sure they'll be just fine. Um, yeah, valiant effort from the Dolphs. But yeah, it's always going to be like climbing Everest here with no uh, thing. Jermaine Sarko, one from three. Jesus, lad. It's terrible. Jesus. Let's have a look at some of these stats real quick. Um... Corey Oates, three line breaks. You had a stinker, but you still... That's such a Corey Oates game. Five errors or something, three line breaks. <laughs> Look, man, I can see. I felt I felt genuinely sorry for Corey Oates when um, he wasn't getting picked and stuff. I'm like, man, surely he's earned a spot over Mariner just out of loyalty. Bro was way off, man. And there was the tr- try he scored, great try. He was so close to messing that play up. Like he was way, he was way not where he should have been. He he was at full speed. Caught the ball at his bootlaces, picked it up and scored the try. Mariner, with his speed, would have been on the chest, walked over. Um, 
yeah, he's just, he just uh, just doesn't have the speed kills in this league at the moment, man. The the, the yeah, and like I said, love Corey, huge fan of his all his career, but he just doesn't have the pace. Reese and Ezra Man on that left edge, especially, create things so quick. If you're a yard back, you're you you are slow. So that's why I, I Kevin Walters, man, like he was, he made the right decision with Arthur's and and uh, Mariner. So really, really good. Um, yeah. But anyway, let's let's not go too much. But oh man, Selwyn Cobbo, absolute as well. Master stroke putting him in at centres. We're worried about him this year, just because um, you know it's um. He, he's he was he's dodgy under the high ball, so I just assumed he had bad bad hands in general. His 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 center game, his tip on his passes, he's, it's nice, bro. He just must get nervous under the high ball or something. Like he looks so good at center. Um, I was pretty impressed with Ezra Mam as well. All right, let's get on to the draw, lads. Let's get on the draw. Warriors versus the Sawyer Eagles. Man of the match for me was Cherry Evans. I loved this game, Battle of the Halves. It was it was really cool seeing Cherry Evans and Sean Johnson go at it. Two vets, two, you know, OGs, still playing some of their best footy. Um, yeah, Cherry Evans, to me, was the better player from minute one to minute 80. Um, but Sean Johnson kicked into gear late. And, um, yeah, it was, it was really handy. Now, we spoke about goal kicking already, guys. Warriors would have had this wrapped up if he kicked better than 50% from his conversions, unfortunately. Um, because they obviously had the penalty goal too. Um, so again, guys, it's looking like goal kicking is going to be super vital this year. Um, yeah, it's 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 absolutely crazy. Like like I said, I think you like I think you need a sniper in your team because there's going to be games where. You, you you score all your tries right on that sideline, and if you you don't have a sniper, you know what I mean. It's it's going to be tough. All right, a few notes from this one, guys. Just for the while, I think Jackson Ford needs to either Jackson Ford needs to sort his hands out, or I think it's Torhu Harris or whoever. I think Torhu threw one. I think maybe Tamari Martin threw one. I wouldn't. His hands don't seem good enough to be able to. You know that that short ball, and you sort of catch it as you get in contact. He, he drops a lot of them, eh? He drops a lot of them. Um, yeah, so... All right, I just wanted to give this dude a shout-out. Bully Moore. I was really worried about the Seagulls. Um, Seagulls with Dylan Brown, not, not Nathan Brown not playing. Um, just bringing that energy. Bully Moore came on. First carry, ran like Dylan Brown, which I've never seen him do before. Got head hide by two players. One got him across his snoz. The other one was an elbow across the eye. Smashed his nose. Cut his eyebrow open. Like, just it's skittled defense. Got up. He could have laid there and got a penalty. He just got up, played it like there's nothing. Nose hanging down like this. Blood pissing out of it. Shh, wiped his nose. Takes another carry. He's gangster, bro. That was so gangster. 99% of players these days would have laid there for a penalty. Got up, played it. Gang against Warriors. That's gangster. That's Warrior right there. Warrior of the round. Bullymore. That was gangster. So, so gangster. Uh, a couple things I'm a little worried about for the... Now, just, just remember, I'm critiquing both these teams as potential top four teams. I thought the Warriors were brilliant, but... Um, just... Uh, one thing I'm a little worried about is just... When Warriors are behind, especially in the first half, AFB ends up playing monster minutes, and he's just not quite as effective 74 minutes from middle forward. He is too big to be playing that. I know we had a little bit of extra time, but, I mean, look at these numbers, 196 metres. Absolutely insane. Um, look at these, Nickel Cookstar, 346. It's just this... Kevy Walters did this a bit with Payne Haas last year. It can really mess with your rotations because... If your best forward, so you, you've got a you've got a top top shelf forward, right? Payne Haas, AFB, two of the best. That um, you know you win in the ruck with them. If you're down, and you, you know, and it's thirty, you're thirty minutes into the half, and you're like, we're losing the ruck, and our best forwards on the park. You can tell some coaches with these guys are scared to pull off their prop, and you know you see it with Payne, you see it with their quality of play just goes down a little bit, just because, you know what I mean, like. 
it doesn't matter how fit you are. If you you're gonna be tired, you're gonna you're gonna be slacking. Not slacking. You just you just physically can't be at your absolute peak when you're fatigued. And I, I thought Melbourne, like if we, so not Melbourne, Manly's um, forwards really did a number on the on the, um, on the Warriors here. It was it was really evident to the eye. We'll see if the stats here um, sort of back up what I was saying. But I thought Paseca, Aloe, and Simply were super dominant here. And I think these guys might have had career numbers. All right, so Taniela Paseca, 198 meters, 82 post contact. I don't know if that's a record, but that's got to be close. Um, Josh Alley, 140, 55 post contact. That is above average for him. And simply 169, 71 post contact. They were winning the ruck for sure. I mean, let's see the play, the ball speed. Simply sub three second play, the balls. That's that's insane. See what I mean? Like, simply comes on for an interchange and starts winning the ruck. And it's sort of like, what do I do? Do I bring AFB off now? And then that dude just tears us, tears us to ribbons. Um, so he's got to figure something out there. Someone else has to step up a little bit. Um, I think the back three from the Warriors, they're doing a great job taking, you know, the meters, but it's more the defense. It's just a bit of everything, you know, but um, I thought Jackson Ford was pretty, it was one of his better games, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is like, yeah, like just, just think of it like you're losing the ruck and your, your best forward, whose only thing sort of holding it together it's 30 minutes deep into a half and sort of needs a break. It's it's hard to pull them off. You know, you want a fresh AFB. A fresh AFB is a scary AFB. So they're going to have to work on that. I thought that was Broncos' end. Warriors had that little bit of a problem last year. Like, you watch you watch Fish and Moses. They play 44 minutes a game. But they're the most intense 22-minute, um, what are they called, stints you'll ever see. I'm not saying they have to go that low, but 75 is too long. <laughs> Bro's 130 kilos. Come on, man. Um, but yeah, gonna have to definitely sell out the goal kicking and just um, get an a, get an AB a, uh, AFB a break. Get an AFB a break. And I tell you what, Manly, scary, scary, scary. Got a few tweaks away from being a genuine top four team as well. All right, let's get into the Eels versus the Cows. Assy man of the match. Cows went in here. We said in our preview, guys, everything was leaning towards. Parramatta winning this game, except that Parramatta were terrible and the last two games and Cowboys were pretty damn good. Everything else sort of said that um, Parramatta was going to win. Well, history anyway. Uh, Arcee was the right choice. I love me some Arcee. Love me some Arcee. He should have been. He should have got the nod over um, Blaze Talangi. I uh, love Blaze, player of the future, but... Not every player's ready at 18. I mean, you know, and Arcee's a bigger body. He's, I'm not saying he's a great defender, but he's a pretty, he's a very good defender for a half, especially not a regular first grader half. He's pretty damn good. Um, and just quietly, I think Dylan Brown might be the best defensive half I've ever seen. Jesus Christ, he was he was chopping Fenifu, um, is it Fenifuaki? Yeah, Fenifu, Fenifuaki. <laughs> Uh, chopped him multiple times. Ch- absolutely chopped him. I, I, he's incredible, man. And not like getting run over and holding on for dear life and people go, what a tackle from the half. Nah, bro, chopping. Like like stopping him in his tracks. He must be, I'd love to see what that dude lifts in the gym, man. Seriously. Well, he might be one of those dudes who can't lift in the gym, but he's just got that natural body strength. I remember um, Hodges was like that from Broncos. Weak as piss in the gym. And then just manhandles dudes on the footy field. It's bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. I remember watching him under the bench one time. I'm like, bro, that's 100 kilos. You're a professional athlete. <laughs> um, right, what have I got for this one? So Eels just did everything they could in the first 20 minutes to make sure the Cowboys won by 60. I thought the Cowboys were going to be win by 60. A uh, few things didn't go their way. There was a dodgy, one of those dodgy calls, but I don't I don't talk about refing on this channel. We talk about footy. And then there was a few calls that were just, they were the right calls, but just went, you know, went the wrong way. Like, um, looks like Tuolungi had scored a nice try, but his knee was out when he put the ball down. It was the right call, obviously. Just, just like, Parramatta were hanging on by a thread. Like, skin of their teeth. But it was, you know, like, warranted. And somehow, Cowboys were winning every stat. But we're down at half time. Sorry, that's got a fucking itchy foot. Um, 
with Parramatta were up at the half. And Parramatta, like people, was, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, Cowboys are robbed here. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. There was a few bad calls in the second half. Parramatta was substantially better than the Cowboys in the second half. They were the better team in the second half. They closed the game better. They were better down the stretch. Um, little Drinky, I love him. He was brilliant. We said on that pre, the game after um, the Broncos, I was a little bit sus on his positional play. Um but yeah, there was a try he let pretty much let in in this one for Morgan Harper to run through and get. Um, but it was the one thing that I noticed from the Cowboys. That I noticed from the Cowboys, um, and it was funny. Mick Innes said it the second after I thought it. I just the Cowboys middles just ran out of puff with about twenty minutes to go. Um, Jason Tamalola was blowing. On his second stint, about five minutes into his second stint, not he actually took a couple. That shout out to him, he was blowing, but he took a couple nice carries as well. But he was taking forever to get back on side. He was, they, they, they might be in trouble. I think what Cowboys might have to do, they might have to drop Granville and bring this um McKelly in because he he was real nice in the preseason. Because uh, Griffin Name comes on and he's great, but it's just like one dude I can't really, you know what I mean, like. You know, you had Junior Paulo, you had Moretti actually came on, give you good minutes. Ryan Madison, you know, they just, it was just like a, like Parramatta, like, um, Parramatta weren't great, but it was like a, what's it called, a production line of, of, of tough carries. You know what I mean? It was like Campbell Gillard would give, then offering Gow, and then it was just a great now Junior, but there was no let up in Parramatta's go for it. It was just good carry, good carry, good carry, good carry, good carry. Not winning the ruck every time or anything, but it was no. Like there was a substantial drop off when Tal Malolo and um, McLean went off. Neem was fine, but it was just like Neem and then Granville on at the same time. It's just there was flat spots in their go forward where Parramatta was just constantly sort of having someone on that can take a good carry. Um, but yeah, Eels hung in there and they got the job done. Man, it was pretty nuts. So, Parramatta, it's a weird one. Like. Everyone wrote them off, had them completely written off this week. And, like, I'm still not, like, super high on them or anything. But, like, think about this for a second. Like, Paramount, like Moses has gone down and right. They're 3-3. Three and three. Um, If they if Gutho kicks that conversion and they end up beating the Tigers, that would be 4-2 and two and sitting, sitting up in fourth. You know what I mean? Like, that. Mitchell Moses comes back round eight. If they they've got the Dolphins next week, if they can, with no Hammer, with no Gilbert, with no Flegler, with no Herbie, if they get that, and then all of a sudden they're four and three, and then they could be right back in there. It's a life of a Parramatta fan, man, completely written off. Then they could literally, could literally be back in the top four before round ten. Well, seventy two percent each completion rates, guys. Uh, run meters almost identical. Parramatta definitely won the post contact there. I thought it would have been larger than that. Um, tackle bus 39 to 33 Ruck was about the same uh, What else we got Tackles uh, Missed tackles 33 to 39 That's actually pretty impressive from Parramatta They usually miss more than that um, Errors 11 each So it's sort of pretty even though Both both teams are pretty Pretty average <laughs> But I really enjoyed the game though It was good fun uh, Drinky was goddamn brilliant 13 runs, 99 metres, 11 post contact. Um, who was good for... So Tua Lungi was really nice. He looks real sharp, man. Him and um, Val, Val Holmes, eh? Um, look at Drinky's numbers. Two line breaks. Uh, two line break assists, two try assists, four tackle breaks. Oh, nice quick play the ball too. Um, Jesus Christ, look at these line breaks. Parramatta just must have been... Um, Jordan McLean was great. Jeremiah Nanano, I looked like the best second row in the game for the first 20 minutes and just sort of disappeared. Taking a real long time. He looked like he was blown too. He was taking a real long time to get run back on side. Uh, Kyle Felt had a Kyle Felt game. Uh, who from Parramatta was good. Gutherson, great. 164, 53 post contact. One line break, one line break assist, one try assist. Man, just imagine Chuck and Zach Lomax into this team right now. They, they probably would be pretty close to top four if, if Moses was healthy as well. Um, Sean Lane, best game I've seen him in a while. Super involved. How many? Oh, 13 runs. Was it? Perfect. That's what I want from Sean Lane. Like, he can have games where he has four or five runs. Just, 
I thought I saw him carrying the ball a lot more in that in that game, and he's so good, man. And he's he falls on his front because he's so big. He gets between players. You know what I mean? He's he's nice. He's real nice. And then it, it just sets it up perfectly because because he's on a bit of an edge. If he does get that fall on his front, get that quick play of the ball, then it's um you got you got the whole open side wide open, and or you got a nice little short side to go down because he does take two. To, to, you have to you have to. You, very hard to tackle him one on one and and stop a slow play of the ball because he's so tall. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, Ryan Madison, I'd love to see a bit more from him. But yeah, good win for Parramatta. Again, they had to win. Like I said, I don't use the word must win this early in the season, but it was getting damn close for Parramatta. And uh, Cowboys, I think you'll be just fine. You just, I just similar to you know the Warriors and the. The Seagulls, definitely a tweak or two away from being like a genuine title contender. Like, they're, they're up there. But like, yeah. Like, if Cowboys play like this against Penrith, it's 24 nil job, you know? Like, so, um, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. But they're, yeah, Cow- Cows, they look good. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at them. They've just, this is the thing. This is what Cowboys have to fix for me. They <laughs> do get better in the wet. Where's his team list? This is my issue, like the the issues or tweaks. I just think they'd sorted out with um, the cows. Need to get better in the wet. Need to get better away from home. Need a little bit more punch in the middle. Just another forward that can just so they just don't run out of steam like the way they did. Um, and just need a little more from Chad. Everyone's saying Chad's rubbish and all that. He's not great. But they've got so much other strike, he doesn't have to be. Like, just be better, bro. Just just to be a bit better, bro. <laughs> be a bit better, bro. And that's really it. Like, the Cowboys are not that far off being a genuine contender. Just, it's just a, a forward and a, a good performance away. From, a good... Chad can just give you a, a 7.5 out of 10 every game. You, you, the Cowboys are going to be a lot better. So, yeah. Let's go, Cowboys. Can't wait to go up there soon for a game alright I don't talk about this game too much just because it was a um, it's just carnage it was just carnage man but I, I just want to give a few people a shout out so Jason Demetrio seemed to have got these guys to respond and they pretty much had the worst luck of all time um, just th- what three four HIAs lost three of their players Cam Murray Lost their start in front rower, just just losing players left, right, and centre. I thought they really stood up and were pretty damn good. It was just um, just wasn't their night, you know. It was one of these ones like, if let's say Rabbitohs weren't under pressure, you know what I mean. Let's say they were sitting there, their eight or something like that. You wouldn't. There'd be no. Talk, you'd just be like, oh man, that just wasn't their night. You know what I mean. But because there was all this pressure on them, people were like, oh, should he, this, that, and the other. But um, I thought that was man. Tom Burgess was just. Bloody good, man. And um, Jai Gray was nice. I thought Jack White would try his ring off. You know, it was real good effort from everyone. Um, who have I got for... Who have I got? Man of the match for me, Ronaldo Molotalo. Damn, he's... Like I said, he's got to be one of the top five wingers of the comp. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, Bunny's all those injuries. Tom Burgess and Jack White can hold their heads high. They were, they were great. I mean, they completed well. Tick... They matched it for meters, tick. They actually won the post-contact battle, tick. Four line breaks to five, that's fine. Got smoked in the tackle breaks, but Jesus, guys. Sharky's back five are just tackle-breaking machines, man. It's absolutely insane. Rucks, similar. Lots of the offloading battle, but they're not really an offloading team, so it doesn't matter. Um, You know, I'm an 11 errors, so, like, pretty much for me, like... The only thing that really could have made this better was like, like I know they missed tackle rates a bit high, but they, their scramble defense was really good. And a lot of these missed tackles were so, for example, Ronaldo and um, what's their back five? So Katoa and Jesse Raymond and Oro, they were just um, just there was a lot of missed tackles that led to nothing. Like shove off, shove off, shove off, get tackled. Didn't actually go anywhere, but it's like three tackle breaks and three missed tackles. Um, and that, they're really good at that. Um, so, like, this, even though this looks pretty bad, I'd say, like, 15 of these were, like, pointless missed tackles, if that makes sense. Just 
It's like, you know, when someone runs along the line and just like fends everyone as they go along and it looks like they've had like six tackle busts and you're like, nah, bro. <laughs> like, it gives the other team five missed tackles when they didn't li- they didn't literally make, didn't make a metre. They just ran along the line fending like Corey Parker used to do. Corey used to piss me off. Everyone used to think Corey Parker was a really, well, he was a pretty good player. But everyone was like, man, he's like the best lock in the game because he, he always scored really high on fantasy because he was a goal kicker and um, a super coach or whatever. And he used to get like seven or eight tackle breaks a game. He he never broke the line. He just ran along it fending and then would just like get tackled eventually. But it, he'd register like 11, 12 tackle breaks a game. I'm like, bro didn't get close to breaking the line. Made no meters. But anyway... <laughs> Just to my little super coach and Corey wrote. <laughs> I'm still salty at that for some reason. <laughs> look, I only conceded two penalties. So, like, look, man, there. You you take say twelve missed tackles off this. You take a couple of errors off here, and this comes down to nine. It was actually a pretty good game for my man. I'm not going to sit here and bag him. And shout out to the Rabbitohs giving JD a second shot, turn it around a little bit. I love what Gray did. I'm pretty keen to see what some of these Sharkies players' numbers were. So just a nice little chip in from everyone. No crazy big numbers from anyone. It was just a really even thing. But look at some of this. Will Kennedy, one line break, one line break assist. Katoa, two line breaks. Ramian, one line break assist. Ronaldo, one line break. What do you get, two tries? Two tries, one line break, two try assist. God damn. Trindle. Line break assists, three try assists. Um, Nico Hines, two try assists? No way. Did he? Oh, huh. I thought he only had one. Uh, yeah, solid. Solid. Man, they get Ueli and Hunt back soon. Damn. Top of the table. Top of the table. Let's see if they're going to be flat track bullies this year. That looked better to me. They look better to me. All right, this was a bit of a poo slinger game, guys. Um, still, I still actually enjoy it. I don't know why, man. Like, I don't like the Dragons at all. And when I say that, I mean like I don't like them. I'm not saying I don't like them like I hate them. Like I just I don't like them. Then I, like, I've never had a, you know, like a, I don't know what's it called. I've never been a bandwagon fan, or I've never like loved players from there. I'm just like you know they're just a team in the NRL. And um, but I'm actually really enjoying them play watching play this year, man. So freaking good. And um, Zach Lomax, man, he's on one. He's on one at the moment. He's like I said, I think he's he doesn't even want to play wing. I think he's top five at the moment. And Parramatta are just licking their lips, going, "Thank God, can you come this year, bro? Seriously." Um, yeah, absolutely looks brilliant. Um, man of the match, Zach Lomax, obviously. Um, Happy Chorus out. This this is the thing with the Tigers, right? Um, so if you, it's sort of like I've said this with the Bulldogs, Bulldogs last year. If you can just attack Reed Marnie, same as same as the West Tigers. If you can just attack Happy Corsair and make him make a million tackles, you're never going to be a slick out of dummy half. Now he had a really good game. He's that no look pass he did was just like gold. Like could not be any better. The, I watched the replay and I was still fooled every time he threw. He he looked out the back. That just it was the deception he showed was just insane. And then, like I said, I watched the replay, and every time I watched the replay, it, it tricked me again. It was so nice, bro. He's um he's crazy. Um, but you saw pretty much what what I saw anyway was as he got more tired, his service became a little poor. And whenever, especially when they went right to left. Just passes were getting caught up here, down here, down here, and then it just it just slows the way it slows the speed you get out to an edge, uh, and then you throw it to the next guy, and he's got to sort of step out and grab it, or he's got to catch it over his shoulder. Just slowed everything down. Didn't look super slick. It was just it just took a really long time to get a ball to an edge, so there was never an overlap, um, just because passes weren't out in front and hitting dudes on the chest. You watched, I mean, the start of the Canberra game, you watched how slick they were getting to it. They didn't do it for the whole game, but bang, bang, bang. you like, even the first time, the Dragons, so they scored in the first minute. Zach Lomax passed out in front. Oh, pass out in front, pass out in front. Zach Lomax just walks over. You know what I mean? So sometimes the difference between an overlap and not is, it's not necessarily the play. It's just how how slick can you get the ball to the edge. 
the speed you can get it there. I wonder if that is ever a stat, how fast you go from the middle to the edge. You know, because a bad pass, just you have to catch it here, set it, reset, and pass. Extra half second. You know, you do it again. That's an, that's a full second just in two passes. You know, I don't know if that's a stat or anything, but you could definitely see it in this game. Like, Tigers took a really long time to get the ball to an edge. Um, what have I got for this one? Uh, yes, a man of the match. So, yeah, it's just... To, yeah, I've literally just written, you know, yeah, Abby's no-look pass was legit. Um, Tiger's passing was off the mark. Appy gassing out after doing too much defense, pretty much. Pretty much. But, yeah, man, I'm really liking watching the Dragons play at the moment. I just, like, Sloan's exciting. Um, all right, so let's have a look. So 79 to 78 completion, so pretty damn similar. Um, run meter's pretty similar, uh, within 100 Post contact, Tigers actually won that one. Average set distance, Tigers won that one. Play the ball speed about the same. Offloads 11 to 17. Damn, it's offload city. Uh, tackle efficiency 87 to 86. 23 missed tackles 31. It's a pretty good game. I actually didn't mind it. It was it, the only reason it wasn't great is because it was sort of like I don't know. It didn't ever look like the Tigers were going to win in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty good game. Footy to watch. But yeah, Zach Lomax is just. Man, I low-key think that Parramatta might be buying him to, for a fullback, eh? Because it just seems a little strange to me that they would spend 700 on a centre. I know they need one bad, but like... I mean, Tony May just signed for 500. Zach Lomack. Gutho to centre. He'll at least plug a hole. Then you, they've, Parramatta wanted that X factor at fullback. It's funny, because if they do do that... They've sort of got Zach Lomax for a steal. Like a really good fullback for 700k is like $700 center is it's a lot of money. Well, not bad, thumbs down. If he's doing what he's doing, he's still good. But, um, but yeah, Zach, what do you get? He got a try, try assist, line break, 139 meters. He was slacking. Uh, I thought Ravalawa looked better than ever. And, um, Jesus, what's his name again? Jacob Little, best I've seen him play, I think. I don't remember him playing a ton of games. He's not one of those players you like study or anything. But uh, he was the best I've seen him play. Anyway, I'm sure he's had better games somewhere. But um, who was that other center? Oh, Jaden Sewer. God damn, 168 meters, 52 post contact, line break. He was real nice. Real nice. Um, I had Buddy Puller for a try score and this didn't hit. Um, oh, 212 meters. Damn, son. Damn. Solid. But yeah, just lacking a little bit in attack. But uh, just got to go do some passing drills, bros. But yeah, it's, um, I think Tigers just... Uh, if Yeah, I think they could fold pretty easy if they've got to do it. Like, if you can just pepper them with attack. Pepper, 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 pepper. And they're not roll. Like, if they get downhill on you, they'll put points on you, man. They would, they'll would they attack you downhill. But if you can make them have to play uphill, then... Um, yeah, you probably get the better of them pretty easy, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. I think the basketball reference there, playing downhill, playing uphill. Oh, man, golden point to finish off the round. I was sitting here on Sunday going, oh, man, two poo slinger of games. And we end up having a golden point. Dragons, Zach Lomax is throwing. Zach Lomax was catching everything, man. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um. All right, so let's go. What have I got for this one? Oh, man of the match, Fogarty. His kicking game is just top shelf. I think him and Reynolds have had the best kicking game this year. Like it's, it's they've been absolutely brilliant, man. Like he, his bomb. Like I like his bomb better than Birdo's bomb. It's nearly as tall, but he gets it up like that. He, but we don't see many Birdo bombs because I don't think he, I don't think he can control it quite as good as Fogarty does. I think it is a bit more of just thump it as hard as I can and see where it goes. Might be wrong. I'm just guessing. Um, whereas Fogarty puts it up and it's pretty accurate and he gets it up quick. Like Birdo takes a really long time to put his bombs up because he's he's bigger, taller man. It's just it's just basic, you know. Like I don't know what a difference. Uh, Physics, <laughs> bigger man, longer ball takes longer to drop to the ground, to kick and follow through. Um, Jamal Fogarty's short little nugget, he's going through, it's like a little cannon, um, absolutely crazy man. But um, yeah, he's, he's kicking games, oh, god damn, top 
top shelf. Uh, Jaden Campbell got injured in this one. Uh, AJ Brimson was in at 5'8", for then had to duck into fullback towards the end. I want to give the Titans a shout out, man. They it was similar to the similar to the Bunnies, just under all this pressure, and they lost, but they just they were so gritty, man. They got right back in this thing. Um, absolutely brilliant. Loved loved it, man. It was so good. It was so good to watch from the Titans. It was funny. I had the Raiders to win in a bet, so I was going for them. But at the same time, I was like, I, I sort of don't care. And I don't want the milk to lose. I just really wanted the Titans to win, and um, just because I just want, I hate team. I hate. I don't mind seeing teams down the bottom, but I just I hate. I hate all the pressure they get from the media. Like shows like three sixty start paying them out and ripping and telling them what they should do with their footy team and shit. And I just I hate it. And so I sort of just want even the bad teams to chalk up some wings. So those, those. Wankers on 360 just shut up. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, I, I like Braith and stuff, but Jesus Christ, they're just telling clubs what to do and just like, bro, you run, you're a columnist. Like, stick to writing columns, man. Tell them how to run a footy club and tell them players what players are bad and not. And I'm like, man, come on, bro. Anyway, um, yeah, so completion rate, real, man. Completion rate's up there. It's going to be one of the best in the comp at the moment. Uh, ran for 2,300 kilometres. I mean, you're going to see some numbers from from the Raiders. But this is the thing too. Raiders technically have the best for and against in the comp. They're sitting third. They had... an extra 12 minutes of ball. They had it in way better field position. And Titans couldn't crack them. I mean, they couldn't crack the Titans. I mean, they, Titans did such a good job. 10 offloads to 6. Um, 89%, 91 so This is brilliant from the Titans, man. So good. Only 31 missed tackles with all that extra time and, and all that extra gas they would have had to spend everything. Just so good from the Titans. I, I was so stoked for them to put up that performance, man. Um, yeah, just, just great. Just really, really good. Um you're about to see something crazy. Look at that. Joseph Tarpany, Joseph Tarpany 302 metres. David Fafita only didn't, had to spend a bit of time on the bench and ran for 212. Damn. 212 metres, that's nuts. Let's have a look at Joseph Tarpany. Xavier Savage ran for 200. Chevy Stewart in his first game ran for 205. Joseph, when have we ever seen a prop? Run for 303 metres without a line break. 134 post contact. If a prop does 134 metres in a game, that's great. He did 134 post contact. That is so ridiculous. So ridiculous, man. What a beast. Absolute beast. But yeah, um, look, man. Raiders could be for real. Like, you know, I just critiqued, you know, the. Some of the possible top four teams, who did I, you know, the, the Cowboys, the, you know, the Storm, the Roosters, the Seagulls, the Warriors. So I guess I have to critique them as a top four team as well, because they're literally coming in the top four. The only thing I think that sort of sucks about the Ra Raiders right now, and I think they've got the least problems out of everyone, which is absolutely wild. I would not thought I'd be saying this about the Raiders as far as they. Their attack sucks in the side the 20. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> They're better off attacking from further out. Like uh, Ricky Stewart, let's straight up, if, if Raiders get a penalty inside their attacking 20, so they're attacking, they're inside the 20, they should kick it back, not take a tap, kick it back to the 40 metre line to halfway and start attacking from there because their attack is so bad. It was actually bad last year as well. When... When the defense is set on their line, fullbacks in the line, they they just can't seem to crack the opposition team, um, which is absolutely wild, man. So um, that that's that's their one thing I really can criticize them. Their, their attack just just suck. They had so much, and I'll I'll, I'll give the Titans some credit there too. They, they were brilliant on their goal line, but it's been more than just this game. I've it's pretty much been from last year. They just lack that. 
whatever, you know what I mean, to, to crack a team, that Api Coruscant deception hit the second row or whatever, whatever it may be. They just don't seem to have that. But yeah, like I said, I can't critique them too hard. I can't critique them too hard. All right, lads, let's... That's it. That's it, lads. Let's just have a look at next week's games real quick. Um, so we'll get back here, guys. All right, guys. So obviously, two guys, make sure you are subbed if you're not already. I'll, uh, like I said, I've got another giveaway to do and a bit of a um, announcement. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so ooh, starting it off strong on a Thursday night. Roosters versus Storm. Damn, that's going to be good. Dragons versus the Waz. Eels versus the Dolphs Friday night. Damn. Uh, Panthers versus the West Tigers. We've got the Titans versus the Seagulls up on the Gold Coast there. We've got the Broncos versus the Raiders. Ooh, this is a real good measuring stick game for the Raiders, man. Real good measuring stick. This is the thing. They've looked so good. They're dominating up the top of the ladder, but look how far outsiders are against the Broncos. That's wild. Um, and then we have the Bulldogs versus... Look at that. Bulldogs pretty short against the Newcastle Knights. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Damn, they might get the dub. Might get the dub. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the... <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>